This is just another little woodworking project for the guest room. It's a little robe rack or hat rack or whatever you want to call it. And it all starts, you know, as if every project with a piece of ash that I harvested from my backyard. And you can see, uh, the first thing you have to do is join it. You can see how, you know, when I dry the wood and stuff, it's never perfectly flat or anything. Um, it's just been air dried for about five years now. So, um, you can see it still had a little bit of a twist and bow in it. So, first thing you have to do is start out with the joiner and uh, put one flat face on it there. And this piece was uh, pretty rocky, you can see, and I just had it set to take a real fine cut, so I had to do a couple passes on it to get it to um, come out, you know, so it was perfectly flat on that one side. Then you just flip that flat side up against the fence there and, and run a perfectly 90 degree edge to that, um, so that way you have, you know, two, two good surfaces to start out with. And then the next thing I do is uh, run it through the planer, and that gives you the, um, the two perfectly parallel faces there. And at the same time, it allows you to bring it down to the desired end thickness. And then um, finally over to the table saw and cut that last edge there to be uh, perfectly square to everything else. And now you have a piece of what's called surfaced four sides lumber. Um, and then it was just a matter, you know, doing a little bit of layout for the centers of all my pegs to hold things. And I was gonna, I decided I was gonna use the uh, threaded look on these again, like I did on the headboard there. So I drilled the clearance holes to start out for the, um, the threading tap for the three quarter inch tap for the beel kit. Um, so I just used a Forstner bit and uh, you can see I use that uh, aluminum straight edge here It really makes it easy to uh, you know work with longer pieces And then I had to use that Beal uh, counter sink bit there and That allows you to break the edges on the uh, holes that are going to be tapped and that keeps the tap from ripping out the green alongside of it and I I've really enjoyed this uh, this Beal threading kit so far I uh, made a lot of little little threaded parts with it stuff and it it really does work good um, I have no complaints about it whatsoever so here I am I'm gonna go back and tap the six uh, threaded holes that I need and you can see that thing goes right through there quickly I put a little bit of wax on it and it makes it go quick and then I just set up the three quarter inch um, set up on the beel with the little Walt router there and I'm getting ready to starting to thread the rod here um, you can see it's a really an easy job once you get everything set up and just a matter of uh, just cranking it through the machine there doesn't take long at all and it's really super simple to set up and I got the first half of the dowel done and uh, just want to try it first to make sure everything is good fits good before I do the other piece I have and then the same thing with the other half. Um, and with the only thing you have to do with this this beel threader is uh, make sure you use a properly sized dowel. And then I just had to cut them off to the lengths that I needed for the um, for the rack. Now you can you can see I just put a piece of plywood there on the miter gauge to um, help cut them and just help push them past the blade as they're cut with a stop block to you know make the repeatability. So there they are, I, you know, I got the uh, parts all started there, and now I need the, uh, well, they were going to be nuts, but I decided to make them round because I didn't really want them to pull on a robe or put any marks on, you know, any clothing or anything, so I figured round would be better, so um, I just took that old hole saw out that I had and I started cutting some round plugs from a piece of walnut, and you can see that um, when I when I use this hole saw what I do is I try to get it so that the saw is actually cutting just barely off the edge of the, uh, the block of wood there and um, that way the sawdust actually ejects out of the slot as you're drilling it and it doesn't get in there and burn and uh, you know stick everything together and stuff it makes it much easier to use the hole saw 
Um, then once I got them cut out, I just uh, threw them in the lathe and had to drill a center hole. And this is what was going to be tapped to match the, um, the thread on those other little peg pieces. So that's easy. Just throw them in the lathe and um, that way you know you're right on center when you drill them. It doesn't take long and the three jaw chuck on the lathe really does help you know center everything and switch out quickly and a little piece of backing wood keeps them from tearing out too bad then I had to put that same little countersink in there to keep the thread from tearing it out so um, put the countersink bit in there and I just used a pair of rubber um, the rubber handles of a uh, wire crimper set to keep them from spinning around it was the easiest way to grip on them and it worked pretty good and you know now I've got these these pieces ready to go and it's a matter of just uh, tapping them and uh, well kind of hard to hold round stuff but um, you know I was able to run the tap through and as I said I, I originally started out was gonna make the hex nuts like I did on the other parts and um, but I just decided that I wanted something that was nice and smooth uh, so if anybody hung a good shirt or anything on it it would uh, not get marks on it and then it's over to that sanding table that I built and I must say that um, this has really helped a lot it uh, catches doesn't catch a super fine dust from sanding but it pretty much catches all the uh, you know most of the sanding dust uh, and it makes it so that you don't have to it at least it keeps the air from flowing from behind you so you don't have to breathe it in while you're sanding and then it was time to uh, take and glue the, uh, the the heads on there on the bolts so I just put a little bit of the tight bond on that I used for everything and made a little fixture just to check everything was square when it went together and set it aside for about an hour to dry and then I just went back and uh, I had left a threaded rod sticking out just a hair so I could sand it all flush when I was done and then the the rack itself I decided to sand some uh, big radiuses on it like I did on the ends of the night tables in that room to kind of make it match that look a little bit so just took that over to the sander and uh, sanded them down and um, once the, the bolts were dried, I just put them on the lathe to just clean them up a little bit and uh, put a couple chamfers on there to break the edges and then went back and I uh, just sanded it, sanded them all down good, um, easiest way to sand something round. Now my wife started calling everything that I'm making in that guest room industrial rustic, so I guess that's a term I'm going to use for that style now. Um, and then I was back to do a little bit more sanding on the rack there and you can see that uh, that sanding tape bench actually uh, really does uh, help out and it, it just saves so much dust and it's nice to have a nice you know light in there that you can actually see what you're doing with. So I got that all sanded up there and um, now for the rustic part um, I went out and I grabbed a piece of walnut that I had that's a um, natural edge on it and uh, kind of picked out the sections that I wanted and just um, decided to cut it down small enough so I could start flattening it on the joiner and that was a uh, easy job for the bandsaw there. Um, the bandsaw has been really working good since um, got everything on a fix here so I've been you know happy with that lately. It's been working. And it's the easiest way to, to sand something like that. Now I have to flatten one side of it and um, you can see this is not really safe to do. You have to be really careful, but I had to take that uh, the guard on the joiner and I had to put a block of wood to keep that open out of the way so I wouldn't damage the edge on this board while I was going through because um, you can knock that bark right off with that uh, spring-loaded joiner um, safety cover there. So you know, that's something you really have to be careful when you do something like that. And it's back over to the planer to get a... Um, you know, get a nice flat parallel surface and bring it down to the three quarters of an inch that I was going for. And you have to just go carefully and um, you know the, the bark actually does stay on good. 
and then I just uh, figured out the exact part piece that I wanted to use and I went back to the uh, bandsaw there because there's no real straight edge yet to go by um, so I just marked it off and I carefully you know cut the straight line as straight as I could to clean that up sometimes you have to you know fiddle around when you're playing with this natural edge stuff and, and then it's time to go back and just uh, cut it to length now I wanted to put some big radiuses on the ends of this little shelf for it. And the only way to really do that with the uh, bark on the edge is to um, try to sand it on there carefully. Um, the bandsaw will just rip that right off and shatter it sometimes. Where um, Just going carefully with the sander actually helps. And uh, once you get it sanded down pretty good, uh, I go back and I do put a coat of polyurethane on it before I polyurethane everything else there you can see that to um, just kind of start to harden it up a little bit now I uh, went back and kind of just wanted to put a little chamfer on the bottom of this uh, main board here um, just to make it match everything else then I needed a couple of these hidden hangers on the back of it and normally I go through and I um, use a router and I route two different slots in there and stuff but this time I decided to try something different and I took uh, two different Forstner bits and I took one the size of the OD of it and then I took a smaller one and drilled centered in that hole a little bit more for the screw head clearance um, I made sure I stayed away from the area where the mounting screws go and uh, it actually worked out pretty good. I was, it was a real quick fix there. You can see uh, the, the hanger screw head has clearance and everything goes together good. So that was a quick way to do that. Then I just had to glue the top back on there. And put put a little bit of um, polyurethane on I got another coat on the top there you can see. Um, I'm trying to get that edge as hard as I can. And then I'm going back now and I'm just doing the final sanding of everything and now at this point I've already got two coats of polyurethane on the uh, bark area there that I'm trying to you know harden up you can see there it, um, it, be it becomes pretty durable after a couple coats so I always try to get a couple extra coats on that area just to because it does soak a lot in in the beginning and then um, just to seal them up real good so now I'm going to go back and start doing the polyurethane on the whole assembly here and I use I've been using these little throwaway foam brushes I just love them I bought packs of them at my dollar store 25 in a pack for a dollar and uh, so I just use them and toss them with each coat and then you can see it takes a while I should have really sprayed this but it takes a while trying to get that really uh, soaked into the bark there and now the, in the end, I decided to mix up a little bit of five-minute epoxy to epoxy those uh, screws in. Originally, I was going to leave them loose, and uh, the more I thought about it, uh, my I could see my granddaughter playing with them and just backing them out so that they were, you know, barely engaged and somebody, you know, having something fall on the floor because of that. So, in the end, I decided to just stick a little bit of epoxy on the threads and uh, just screw them in there flush so that there'd be no worries about them, you know, ever being... Uh, backed out so I just uh, you know a little epoxy on the thread screwed him in and then just kind of lined up the grain a little bit and that just took five minutes for the epoxy to dry on there and uh, pretty much you can see I put a coat of wax on everything and uh, it's all ready to go up and be hung I started uh, went up to guest room and just took my level and you know I wanted to put the uh, bottom of the rack flush with the bottom of the TV so I put some mask and tape on the wall to kind of prevent to kind of protect the paint stuff and took a couple of measurements to get everything so it come out lined up and uh, got out the stud finder to just kind of make sure that I'd be right in the center of the studs because I you know needed pretty two pretty good sized screws to hold this in place. So I got the first one marked and then um, went back and just double checked the uh, center to center distance on them so there'd be no problem getting the rack up. And just pre-drilled some clearance holes for the screws to make them easy to go in. And 
Try to get them nice and straight, as straight as I can so the heads will be in the perfect location. And when you're you're using those little hangers like that, you want to make sure that you use a uh, a really high quality screw. Um, you don't want to hang them off like a uh, sheetrock type screw or anything like that if you're um, going to put any kind of weight on it. So I pretty much got the the screws started in there, and they're kind of flathead so that they lock in and. I didn't quite have the screws adjusted out properly when I went to put it on the first time and there was a little tiny um, tang of that uh, ramp on the on that one uh, holder and that one bracket there that you can see put a pretty good gouge in the wall so I uh, you know it did take a couple tries until I got them so that they uh, fit on there perfect and uh, when you gave them a little bit of a tap they went down and they actually locked on there good and tight so there it is all done except for the my one mess up there where I put that gouge in the wall so and that was a matter of getting that little bit of tape and compound and putting coat on there and uh, you know you, there you can see pretty much what it looks like it I'm real happy with it because you a place to hang a hat or hang a robe or you know throw a set of keys on the shelf or something like that so you know I should help out a little bit and then it was time to just sand off that mess I made and using the vacuum really helps and uh, just a couple minutes to touch it up um, luckily I still had paint left from the room and you have to just kind of try to brush it out a little bit uh, you don't want to hit the one little area otherwise you'll see it so I just kind of tried to, to feather it out a little bit and stuff because you can see a different texture when you brush it compared to what the rolling looked like and there it is all done and it's just a you know simple ash and walnut rack there just to match everything else in the room and like i said my wife's calling this my uh industrial rustic style now so i have to agree with that kind of so that you can see the the threads show out pretty good there on those uh pegs and uh you know the round heads don't look too bad but uh hopefully they'll help things from getting damaged instead of hexes and just that little walnut shelf to to throw a couple things on if you have to and our you know dogs have to approve all the guests as you can see and right after i got that done i went back and i um decided to hang up the curtains and i made a really uh another industrial rustic uh rod set up there and basically i took a piece of 10 foot stainless steel polished tubing that i polished up and took some stainless steel eye bolts actually to hang it to, um, to get the correct distance from the wall and I just kind of mounted that across the top of the windows across the whole side of the room there and just slid the uh, the curtains right on that and uh, they still have to hang out a little bit you can see they're still a little bit um, they're new yet so they have to hang out but um, basically there's still going to be something to hang off the middle of that also a little shelf when I get done thanks for watching please subscribe